Hi, Lori Birch here, your go-to wills and trust attorney. Getting your will set up is great, but now what? Well, after you've congratulated yourself on some big time adulting, there are a few things that we recommend that you do to ensure that your family and loved ones are prepared. So here are three tips on what you should do once you've signed your will. When clients walk out of my office after they've signed their wills and powers of attorney, I often imagine them going home and just putting their folder in a file cabinet or a safe and then not thinking anything about it. But there really are a few things that you should do, like telling your executors and agents that you've named them. Now, I know it may seem exciting, kind of like a lifetime movie for your friends to find out that you've named them as the guardian of your kids once you've died, but in reality, you really should do three things. Tell them that you've named them, let them know where you keep your documents, and make sure they would have access to those documents in case of emergency. And that leads to my second tip on what to do once you've signed your will. Decide the best place to keep your documents. It's really important that your originals do not get lost or damaged because they generally don't get filed anywhere. And I know that that's scary. And in a pinch, you can use a copy, but you don't want to rely on that. There's a lot of extra challenges using copies. I generally recommend keeping them at home, preferably in a fireproof safe. Now, I know some suggest or desire to keep them in a safe deposit box. A couple cautionary tales about that, though. Those boxes typically get frozen once you've passed away. And if the very document you need to unfreeze them is in that box, you can see the problems. But if you really do prefer keeping them in a safety deposit box, ask the bank if you can add your executor or family member to the account so that they would have access in an emergency. One last thing with safety deposit boxes, you aren't going to be able to access your documents if the bank is closed. I even had a client who wasn't able to get her will because her bank was closed due to COVID. Finally, my last tip on what you should do once you've signed your will is to provide a will memorandum with instructions and important information. A will memorandum can be a guide to your executor where you list people to contact, where you keep important paperwork like deeds and birth certificates, making lists of usernames and passwords and where you bank. You can even use a will memorandum to make a list of specific items you may want to go to specific people without clogging up your will with all of that information. Now remember, a will memorandum is not legally binding, but it will greatly assist your family and loved ones with handling your affairs and fulfilling your wishes. Now I know what you're thinking. I finally got my will in place. Why all this extra work? I know, but if you really want things to be easy and simple, don't put a fork in it yet because you're not done. At Birch Law, we've actually developed an online will memorandum where you can fill out all this information online, hit submit, and boom, you've got a will memorandum. Have changes? No problem. Either log back into the app or you can edit the Word document that will get generated. To get started on your will memorandum today, click the link provided or reach out to us for more information. This is the best way to provide protection for your family and peace of mind for you. And remember, if you don't have a will, the state of Texas has one for you.